Hey guys, how you all doing? I'm Paul and this is Tech and Travel. So about seven weeks ago I made a video covering the worst things about the BA OLED and today I'm doing a follow-up video to that and uh, I'm sure some of you guys will be wondering why I'm doing a second video and why I didn't include all the things in the first video. Well, simple reason for that is that you have the honeymoon period with you know a TV or any new device and you quite often overlook um, little niggles with the, the device and um, things come to light at a later date you know with maybe updates that have made it worse and just other things that you pick up on that you might not have done um, to start with so this today is to pick up on the sort of second layer of things that I've now noticed since after seven weeks of ownership and you know I've said all along I'm going to be fully honest and open with you guys about any negative things to do with this TV um, doesn't matter how small they are I know in the last video a few people said I was nitpicking a bit with a few of the things but you know I'd rather be totally honest and say about everything that you know I don't like about the TV or find a bit annoying and that way you know I, you know I can hold my hands up and say yeah I'm being truthful I'm not hiding anything and you know you guys can have faith in my videos. Um, I was actually meant to do this video about a week ago but I've been planning a holiday for my family um, which I'll be doing a video of uh, next week when we're away so if you'd like to know more about that stick to the end of this video and I'll ask more details on that. So anyway let's crack on with this video. Right so the first thing I want to talk about is the ABL or Auto Brightness Limiter. Now what this does is when you're watching uh, say a film back program whatever and there's a very bright intense white screen um, it will actually dim down the brightness of it um, to preserve the life of the TV and what I'll do now uh, is give you guys a quick demo of that to show you what it's like and I've got an advert lined up on here which demonstrates it pretty good and if you see when we go to next screen you see it there just dimmed down I'll do it one more time and there again actually I'll do it a few times so you guys can pick up on it so when it goes to the, uh, the very logo on its own on the white screen you will see it there just dim down again there so yeah whilst it doesn't trigger very often um, I must admit if you were watching a film or something and that did happen I you know it could be enough to sort of draw you out from the film you know so uh, you know you're not as immersed sort of thing and uh, you know distract you from it for a few seconds um, not the biggest deal in the world but still when it does happen you know it, you do pick up on it straight away so that's the uh, the first one of the annoyances, shall we say. Right, so next up is uh, vertical banding. And not just the fact that these TVs suffer from vertical banding, but more for the fact that the inconsistency with them. Um, I don't know how well it will show up on here. I have done tests showing it before. But, um, you know, you, you can get maybe a good panel, but... After a few weeks, a couple of months, you've done a few sort of cycles through the screen refresh and it will actually change the uh, how the banding comes across. Now I seem to have gained a line, I don't know that well that's coming across on camera, sort of just coming down here, which wasn't there before, which again can be a bit annoying because you know next week that might clear up again. So bit frustrating that it sort of you know can get better and worse you know I wish it would just sort of stay the same you know so if you've got a good panel that's it you're stuck with a good panel not that the inconsistency of it fluctuating all the time right so uh, let's move on to the next one so the next thing I've seemed to have picked up on um, after a bit of ownership is the the shifting when it comes to a white screen now, as you can probably see on the camera, it looks a bit more whitish on the left and a bit more bluish on the right. In, 
in person um, it's a bit different to that it's actually more sort of um, pinker should I say on one side not really blue that's just the the camera changing it but when you actually shift it does change the look of the white from which angle you're, you're sitting at um, again doesn't really stand out all the time um, but on you know if you move around a bit whilst you're watching TV you, it's the sort of thing that you might pick up on so yeah slightly annoying but not the end of the world right let's move on to the next one right the next screen related um, downside um, I'm fortunate enough that I don't actually have it really on this TV but I did have it on the 55 inch version of it but I thought we'd include it in this one because um, a good chance if you are buying one of these TVs that you might get one with the problem and that is this screen will have um, basically creases in it almost um, and it's slightly warped what you would do is get like a crease there and about there in the screen something I'm guessing to do with the manufacturing process of the display uh, my like I say the 55 inch one I had was uh, far worse didn't really notice it at all when the TV was on but when it was off and you were walking about you could see it you know the the difference in the panel uh, as you walk past it but this one as you can see it's nice and flat but yeah something to look out for if you are buying one of these TVs is try and get one if you can with a, a nice true panel on it. Right, let's move on to the next. Right, so the next annoyance I found with this uh, TV is uh, when I'm playing back certain material. So at the moment I'm on Amazon Video and as you can see it's HDR. And if I go down to um, all right, picture options, and go to true motion as you can see it is off now I prefer it on not everyone does but that's my preference so I'll set it to clear and we come back out of that now and I'll turn off the TV wait for the red light to come on there we go let's fire it back up and get Amazon working again so just press the Amazon button there I have to go careful with what I show on the TV. No, we've got an update there, which I won't be doing at the moment. So we'll find um, Grand Tour again. That should be enough. And there it is. Again, I can't show the whole image here because uh, I'll get done for copyright and the movie will be, uh, or video will be taken down. So if I get up settings menu again, and we go to picture, and then down to where are we? picture options, and then all the way down, and there we go, true motion off. Why it does this, I've got no idea. But every time I have to go back in and then turn it back on to what I want, which, yeah, is pretty frustrating, to be honest. Like I said, I don't know why it does this. It doesn't do it on all the things, but it does it on this. So, yeah, that's uh, another annoyance. Right, let's uh, move on to the next. Right, so the next thing, again, is uh, to do with the menus and something lacking should I say. Now some of you guys might have seen that I've done recent videos about burning and on those videos I've said about how many hours I've used the TV for and what I've had to do is just guesstimate um, roughly how many hours it's been. But some of you guys pointed out that there is actually a counter built into the TV that tells you how many hours it's actually been on for. But uh, for some reason um, mine doesn't have that so I'm guessing it's just region dependent which is a bit frustrating. So I'll just show you guys now as proof. So if you go to general and then down to um, about this TV 
and then TV information. Now I'll have to go careful here because I'm not sure what I can and can't show you. So I don't want to be giving away stuff that I shouldn't. So I'll just move the camera off slightly there. So we've got model number, serial number, device name, blah, 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 and like that. Let's move that down again. And there is nothing there whatsoever to say about how many hours it has been on for. So, yeah, a bit frustrating that I don't have that. Um, I was hoping it would come in the last update. It hasn't. Um, there is another date up update, as you can see there now, which I will do. But I don't, from what I've read, I don't think it will change that. Um, and I'll let you guys know and adjust this video accordingly if it does. Um, so anyway, let's move on to the next one. Right, next couple of things up are uh, to do with the remote control. Now, all was good when I first got it, but uh, after a few weeks of use, it has now uh, seemed to have gained an annoying creak. Again, it might sound a bit pathetic, but when you use a, you know, the remote on a daily basis, it can be a bit annoying. And uh, whenever I seem to go to press a button, you autom automatically sort of, you know, you grip at the back and you get this creaking. Can you hear that? Which isn't the best when you're trying to press buttons that I could say not a massive deal, but you know, it just makes it feel a bit even cheaper than what it actually is. Right, so uh, yeah, there's that. And the other thing with it is the actual design. Now, someone else actually picked up on this. One of the subscribers um, complained about it. And I since have picked up on it myself after a bit of use. And that's the uh, the shape of it. Because it's um, round on the bottom, really, and not flat like a lot of other remotes, it's got a tendency to roll about quite a bit. So... As an example, I'll put it down on the sofa, you know, not sort of thinking about it. And it just, you know, will just want to roll down and quite often straight down the side. Again, not the end of the world, but a bit frustrating nonetheless. You know, if they put a bit of a flatter bottom on it, um, yeah, it would have been a bit better in that department. would be uh, trying to make a getaway all the time. But, uh, yeah. Not the end of the world, but again, just a little niggle, really. So uh, let's move on to the uh, final thing. Right, so the final thing I want to pick up on is uh, something I should have picked up on when I took the TV out of the box. So it's a bit of a warning to you guys as well. And uh, that's the fact that it's got a film on the back of the TV. Now, when you take out the TV out of the box, there is a little warning tab on this corner and the other corner to see that there's a film on it and to peel it off. But there is also one on the back of the TV. So it's very hard to see. Um, and it's actually still on there at the moment. I can just maybe make out the line of it there. And I'll need to peel that off, which I will do in a minute. Um, but they should put maybe some little tabs on that to say that it needs to be pulled off. Because, you know, again, in all your excitement, getting the TV out of the box, it's uh, quite easily missed. So, uh, yeah, you might want to take that one off the back when you get your TV out of the box. And there you have it then, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. And if you did, really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, maybe think about hitting that subscribe button. Uh, once again, big thanks to all my new and old subscribers. And as I said at the start of this video, um, me and my family are off on holiday next week and uh, we'd love for you to join us. You know, uh, we're making some videos about our trip. Um, we're uh, staying in a villa that we've rented out and uh, yeah, it should be good fun. We're off to Mallorca, so hopefully we'll uh, get a nice uh, bit of weather over there. 
But um, as with always with our family holidays, they are a bit of a nightmare because uh, we have got five children and uh, that in itself is, you know, a bit of a handful. But also we're taking my mother who is disabled and in a wheelchair, so that makes it even more harder. Then you've got me two-year-old who's going through the terrible twos and my oldest son uh, is mentally handicapped. So yeah, to say it's a bit stressful is uh, an understatement, but nevertheless, hopefully, you know, I should still have fun over there. And yeah, like I said, I'd love for you guys to join us. So uh, watch out for those videos coming soon. So anyway, thanks once again and uh, catch you guys on the next one. Bye for now.